Hey, it's Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and Ink Nouveau. I want to talk to you about the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. It's not a new pen per se. It's been available in Japan, possibly elsewhere, but it is new to the US. So I just got them in and I uh, wanted to show you what they're all about. They're in the custom line, which is uh, consists of the Custom 74, the Custom Heritage 92, the Custom 823, um, possibly some other pens overseas, but those are the three that are in the US anyway. So I wanna show you what they're all about, compare those, and show you this relatively new pen. The Pilot Custom Heritage 92 here comes in the standard Pilot box that you might have seen in several of my other videos. I've reviewed the Fermo and the Vanishing Point. And, um, this box is is no different, standard, you know, em embossed, engraved. I don't know exactly how they, the process of doing that, but it's got the logo in there. Uh, here's the pen, you know, nice little Pilot logo in the top. Um, the pen is kind of held in here by a little band. Underneath, you've got, um, you know, a thing telling you not to try to remove uh, the nib or neck assembly from the barrel. It's got kind of the same designation on the um, Custom 823. You notice that there's nothing in the bottom. Most every other pilot review I've done has had, you know, a cartridge and a converter or whatever in the bottom, but, you know, this is a piston fill pen, so it's strangely empty down there. Anyway, not that it really matters because it's the... It's the case anyway, who really cares about the case. So, I care about the pen. Um, it does come with a little sticker, uh, usually on here, that uh, has a designation in uh, English and Japanese, uh, as far as the nib size, and it's got a little tag here that says, you know, Custom Heritage 92, so that's fine, not a big deal. Um, but here's the pen. It is a piston fill clear demonstrator pen. Uh, it looks kind of similar to the Prera, as you may notice. Um, here's the Prera. Prera is Pilot's, um, it's a steel nib pen. It's a little bit smaller, it's a cartridge converter pen. But, uh, you know, the Prera comes in different colors. And when I say colors, I use the term loosely because basically the only thing that changes is the top and the, the very bottom down here is, you know, changes to a different colored, you know, tinted demonstrator type um, accents there. But uh, the, the Custom Heritage 92 has kind of a similar look to the smoke color Prera. A um, few key differences, obviously the size is quite a bit different. Custom Heritage 92 is a piston fill versus cartridge converter. It's got a 14 karat nib versus a steel nib. Um, and then the um, one of the biggest aesthetic differences would be that uh, you've got this white kind of uh, cap insert here on the Prera and you've got a tinted smoke one so you can see the nib a lot better on the Custom Heritage 92. So that's the Prera, um, but that's not really so much of the comparison. I will bring that one back here in just a minute. But um, the other two pens that are more easily compared to um, would be the other custom pens. You got the Custom 74, which is one of my all-time favorite pens, and then the Custom 823, which is another one of my favorite pens. So you've uh, this one kind of fits in the middle here. So if you think about it as kind of a, a low, medium, high, and it kind of, you know, works out like most fountain pens do, where the cartridge converter pen usually ends up being a little cheaper. Piston pens end up being a little more expensive, and then the vacuum filling pens usually end up being even more expensive. So that's what you've got here. The Custom 74 um, is a cartridge converter pen, so it takes standard Pilot Namiki um, cartridges, or it comes with a Con 70 converter. It can also take uh, a Con 50 converter, but that doesn't come with the pen. This is what comes on the Vanishing Points and a lot of the other pilots. It's what comes with the Prera, um, the Miki Falcon. But uh, the, the Con 70 is a little bit bigger con uh, converter than most. So um, I think a lot of people find it to be a good compromise. If you like an ink capacity that's you know beyond what your typical cartridge converter is, the Con 70 is a good, good ticket for that. So that's the Custom 74. The Custom Heritage 92 is very similar in size to the Custom 74. You can see here, um, Custom 74 is just a little bit, little bit longer, okay, but not a significant amount. And the diameter of the two is almost exactly the same, so they feel very similar in the hand. There's some aesthetic differences, sure. I mean, granted, this is the blue Custom 74. There is a smoke one, which is more of a gray color that kind of closer matches this one, but this is, this is the one I like is the blue one. You know, but eh, that's that's neither here nor there. That's just the color thing. So it's got some similar accents. The center band on both pens is very similar. I can show you there. It's actually, I wouldn't be surprised if it was 
um, you know, the same center band, just labeled differently. You know, it's got the name here, Custom Heritage 92, stamped out there. You know, Pilot Japan stamped on the back. Um, the uh, the cat the clip is different for sure. Um, it's got kind of this um, dagger style clip instead of the you know tapering with the ball on the end of it that the Custom 74 has. Um, you know, it's it's different different taste for different people. I personally uh, don't really use my pens in my pocket very often. I usually keep them in a slip, so I can't really say whether one's better than the other or not. It's really a personal preference kind of thing, but I find both clips, you know, act respectively. Um, the Custom 74 is more rounded. The Heritage 92 is kind of more angular, um, especially on the ends here, and that's that's okay. I don't mind that. That's where that's really where it kind of looks more like the Prera in that respect. Uh, but then the nibs themselves, I believe, are identical uh, on these two pens. So the Custom 74 and the Heritage 92, the nibs are the same, 14 karat gold. It's even stamped and says all the exact same stuff on it. I happen to choose two medium nibs here, so they really look identical. So, um, And then the feed system as well looks similar. Granted, the Custom 74 is inked up, and the Heritage 92 is not, so that's why it looks darker. But I believe it's the same feed and... Um, and system. So I expect, I actually haven't inked up this yet, I'm going to save it for this video, uh, but I believe they're going to write, you know, pretty well exactly the same. As far as, um, you know, how they are posted, uh, I think they're going to be pretty similar in terms of their length. Okay, the Custom 74 is just a little bit longer. There you go. A little bit longer, but nothing noticeable. It is just a tad heavier. So the Heritage 92 is just a little, little bit lighter. I find the balance to be pretty good, though. I think it um, it's uh, it's good when it's posted. It's going to be um, pretty well balanced too when it's not posted. Um, now, it's for me, I have really big hands, so I probably am more comfortable when I have it posted. I used to never post my pens, but now I post them all the time. I don't know, just a preference thing that's kind of changed for me over the years. Uh, but I really like the feel of it when it's posted best. Not to say you can't have it that way. It's not like the Prera. The Prera, if you are trying to write with it, it's almost hard to write with it unposted unless you have very small hands because the Prera is a pretty small pen. So with me, I've got really big hands and I tend to hold my pens pretty far back as well. And you can see it's almost falling into the, the open part of my hand here when I try and write with it unposted. So if the Prera for me is like, it's gotta be posted just so I can handle it. Um, the Heritage 92, though, is not, not quite that way. It's, um, I can definitely write with it. It's not like in danger of falling out of my hand or anything like that. So it could really kind of go either way. Um, and then I'll just kind of touch on the Custom 823 here. The Custom 823 is kind of the big brother to both of these. Um, it's very, very different. It's probably similar and aesthetically to the Custom 74 more so than the Heritage 92. So you can see the difference there. The A23 is a little bit bigger in diameter. It's definitely heavier because that vacuum mechanism in there definitely adds a bit of weight to it. Um, as far as the overall weight goes, you're looking at 29 grams for the Heritage or the A23. You're looking at 20 grams for the Heritage 92 and 22 grams for the Custom 74. So the Heritage 92, just by a little bit, is the lightest one of the group here. Um, and then the most notable thing uh, about aside from the filling mechanism about the Custom 823 is that the nib size is bigger. So you're going to get a much bigger nib with it than you will with um, the Custom 74 or the Heritage 92. Um, that may make a difference for you. It may not. I find that all the nibs actually kind of perform about the same despite the different size. Um, and I'll show you that here in a second. But there's the, uh, there's the custom, uh, custom lines. I'll get those out of there and I'll just focus on this pen for a second. So um, I'll show you some close-ups here. So there you go, you can really see that clip. Um, now these are all, um, uh, it's a gold nib, but it's a rhodium plated gold nib. So uh, it's going to be the same 14 karat gold that you get on all of the you know higher end pilot pens, um, except it's rhodium plated, so it's going to give it that silver color. It doesn't really affect the performance or anything. It's more of an aesthetic thing. Um, it is clear. It's a clear demonstrator all the way through. So that means when you fill it up with ink, 
you're going to see the ink in the grip section here. That's one question I get um, for people that have never had demonstrators before is they, they think if ink is all up in the grip section here that something might be wrong. Well, that's not wrong. It's just how pens work and uh, every pen looks like that. It's just usually you can't see it unless it's a demonstrator. Um, here's the cap. So um, I already kind of showed you the close-up of the band. Uh, let's see if I can get a little more here. There you go, Custom Heritage 92 Pilot Japan. Nice. It's it's uh, it's subtle. I like I like a lot of the details that Pilot has. It definitely it's a clean looking pen. Um, there's nothing uh, really rough looking on here. And then here you can see the piston mechanism. Uh, it's just a single seal. It's not a double seal. So I think that's interesting. But um, uh, you know, it's uh, got the mechanism up here, and then the way that the mechanism works is you untwist this part. It kind of separates where this gray gray part is, um, and that untwists from the back of the pen. And then you can see it's obviously moving the seal down, and it's going to move it back, uh, and voila. There you have it. Now, you may think to yourself, well, gee, look at the seal stops right there, and I can go further. You know, can I pull this mechanism out and get it to go further up? Well, that's like the first thing that I tried when I, when I got this pen out of the box. And no, you're not able to do it because if you try to um, re-insert uh, this thing where the thread is a little bit deeper, then it's uh, the back end of the piston rod is going to hit the back of this part of the pen and it's not going to be able to close all the way and then this part is just kind of free spinning. So technically, you can get a little more space out of here but then this part's gonna be free spinning. Um, I don't you know, really think it's worth that trade-off but if you do, then you know, more power to you. If it's your pen, you can do whatever you want with it but uh, I don't know how Pilot's warranty department might feel about that but you know, it's, uh, it's totally up to you. Um, so there's the pen. Uh, I wanted to ink it up, show you how it writes, especially because I'm curious myself. I expect it to write identically to the um, Custom 74. And I actually have all four of these pens with medium nibs. Uh, I personally like the Pilot medium nib. Uh, just That's just my own thing. So I have a bottle of Ku Jaku here, and I already have all the other pens inked up except for the Heritage 92 with um, Kujaku, so I will go ahead and demonstrate how to fill this pen. Now, if you've never seen a piston filler before, uh, I just kind of showed you how it works, but basically you just move your piston all the way down and then you need to immerse the nib in the ink all the way until it gets up to the grip section here because it's gonna fill uh, from right back here. Okay, so um, technically if you're filling from, you know, a very low bottle or an ink sample or something like that, really as long as you're getting some of the fins here, if you're filling it very slowly, you might be able to draw it up in there, but ideally you want to be able to completely immerse the whole nib all the way up to this filler hole to be able to get a good filling. So I've got a relatively full bottle here, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem for me. Um, and I have my paper towel, I almost always forget it, but I have it today. Okay, so I'm going to immerse the thing, and then I just slowly untwist as I draw ink up into the pen. And normally when I'm filling like that, there's usually a pretty big air gap. I'm actually kind of surprised at how much of a filling I got this first go around. That's, that's kind of impressive. Um, there's normally a big air bubble when you go to fill a piston pen for the first time, but I really don't have much of an air bubble. Um, so I want to um, just expel this back out and then try filling it again, see if I can max this thing out and maybe I can get a reading on how much ink this pen will actually hold. So bear with me for just a second. Okay, so I still have a little bit of an air bubble. If you want to completely max it out, there's a little trick that you can do. Um, just have it go down about halfway, kind of expel some of the ink back out and then turn it upside down and make sure you know which direction you're twisting, but twist it so that the piston is going to go back into the pen until you're drawing some air into the pen like that. Now you've got an air bubble at the top here. You just expel it. You might get some bubbles there, so kind of watch out where you're doing this. Okay, until you get some ink coming out, just like so. And now I know that there's no air left in this thing, and when I insert it back in here, I'm gonna twist it back up. And I know that I have about as much ink in this pen as you can fit. Okay, so there it is. I will just kind of wipe off the grip section there. 
I kind of wanted to get a reading on how much this thing will actually hold. So I've got a little sample vial here that's got some, uh, you know, milliliter markings on it. So uh, let's see. I'll just kind of dump the ink into there. Try and get all of it out. And I'm reading, it's hard for me to show this in the video, but I'm reading about maybe 1.8 three milliliters, something around there, 1.3, 1.4. Um, you know, that's a pretty decent volume for, uh, for a pen. Your typical cartridge converter is gonna get you about a half a milliliter. So it's gonna be, you know, uh, a good deal more than your typical cartridge converter. Um, there are some piston pens out there that will hold more than that. You know, the Custom 823 will hold more than that because it's a big vacuum pen. Uh, but, you know, getting more than a full milliliter is, is pretty good. That's going to last you a good while. Okay, now that I've uh, got the thing inked back up again, I can just kind of get all the excess off of here. And I'm going to just kind of take and touch the, the um, nib to the paper towel and kind of draw some ink through before I do my writing sample. Okay, so there we go. Things all inked up. Good to go. Now it's time to write. Okay. So here it is. This is a medium 14 karat Pilot Custom Heritage 92. Whoops. So I can't spell heritage. This has a 14 karat medium nib. Now I've written a lot with my Custom 74. Um, so I'm very familiar, and that's got a medium nib too, um, same nib as this. And I can say that these two perform pretty much identical. Um, same smoothness, same spring, um, you know. Um, I, I, I would expect that it would perform the same, and it's very much meeting that expectation. Same wetness, too. Um, let me try out real quick the Prera, because uh, the Prera is very interesting. It looks like it, and it's a steel nib, too. Um, it's, it's significantly less in price. So, um, you know, I think the Prera tends to get some attention. So here is the um, Prera. And for having a steel nib, and this pen, um, you know, is around $50, uh, it writes pretty darn smooth. Uh, the Prera is actually, uh, you know, one of the pens that I hear talked about a pretty good amount, but not probably as much as I think it should because it, it really writes well uh, for what it is. Um, so it's writing pretty similarly. It's, it's not quite as wet the Prera as the as the Heritage 92. Um, that's kind of what I've found with the Prera is they tend to be just a little bit stingier, which is not necessarily such a bad thing, especially if you're going with the fine nib. Um, the Prera is available in fine and medium nib, and if you if you want that, if you want a fine nib, then that is um, definitely a good way to go. Uh, so I've got the blue Custom 74 here. You can just see how the Custom 74 is writing a little bit wetter than that Prera. Now it's not necessarily such a fair fight um, because I've been using this pen a lot and I've broken this nib in really well. You know, it's a gold nib on this one so it does have a little bit more spring to it but I also kind of write with a heavy hand because I like wet writing pens. And so this Custom 74 is really broken in well for me. This is all the same ink in all three of these pens. Uh, but the, the performance of, of how the Heritage 92 and the Custom 74 uh, is, is pretty much identical. And then of course I have the 823 as well, which has the bigger nib, uh, but you'll see it writes pretty similar as well. So it's about the same. Um, the Heritage 92, probably, um, 
is going to break in a little bit, just like the Custom 74 will. It's not unusual for gold nib pens to kind of break in and adjust a little bit to your, to your writing pressure. Uh, but overall, I would say I'm impressed with the way this thing writes. Uh, it's a nice pen. As far as the price goes, you know, the Prairie, you're looking just over $50 for one of these. Um, so that is definitely kind of in its own league with this group. Uh, the Custom 74 is going to sell for about $160. So it is a jump, but you're going up to a gold nib. The uh, Custom Heritage 92 is going to go up to 220 or somewhere thereabouts. Um, you know, really a lot of that is pretty much just the piston, the filling mechanism and, and whatnot. And then the, uh, the Custom 823 jumps up to about 288, pushing 300. So there you're getting the vacuum filling, the larger capacity, the bigger nib, and so on. Um, but, you know, if you, if you like the Custom line, I, I am definitely a big fan of it. Obviously, I'm a retailer. I'm biased. But, uh, you know, if, it, Pilot's got a great reputation, and it has it for a reason. And uh, the, the Custom Heritage 92 kind of fits in between the uh, Custom 74 and Custom 823 because before that it was kind of a jump. You know, the Custom 823 is close to twice the price of the Custom 74. So if you want a little bit bigger ink capacity, if you like the maintainability of a um, uh, piston fill pen as opposed to the uh, cartridge converter pen, and uh, you don't quite want to dive in, or if you, maybe you like the clear version instead of the amber of the 823, uh, then I would say the, the Custom Heritage 92 might be a good choice for you. So that's the Custom Heritage 92. If you have any questions, just post them here in the comments. I'd love to know your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching, and right on.